Aloha, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Thinking Things Through, Critical Thinking for Critical Times. I'm your host, Michael Sukoff. We are pleased to have with us today, Jay Fidel. Hi, Michael. Thank you for having me on. My pleasure, let, me, yeah, let me answer the, um, you know, the definitive question here. The answer is no. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, maybe we're done now? No, you stole my thunder, but we're no, we're not done. Um, is there anything you'd like to add briefly about yourself or, or about ThinkTech before we start? No. Okay. Uh, and in the interest of full disclosure, it was because of you that this show, Thinking Things Through, is on the air. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Jay, as you and many of our viewers and listener, listeners already know, Thinking Things Through seeks to provide a forum for thinking critically about important issues in the world today. And we seek to do this by exemplifying ways of looking at and thinking about these issues from alternative, more critical perspectives. This includes learning how to question the ways in which these issues offer, often are presented to and framed for us by the mainstream mass media and on social media. So let's get right to the uh, heart of the matter. As you are, as we already said, the topic today is, is the U.S. electorate ready for November? And why, why don't you start us off, Jay? Is the U.S. electorate ready for November? You already said no. What do you mean by ready? Um, can we count on them in the election? Can we count okay. on them to make rational choices? Can we uh -huh. count on them to be engaged on the issues? Can okay. we count on them to vote at all? Right. So it sounds like you're talking about, broadly speaking, civic engagement, which includes voting and all the different kinds of behaviors that are associated with voting, such as knowing enough about the issues, knowing who the candidates are and where they stand. Um, and I think what- right, That's pie in the sky. You know, you remember, uh, what was it? Uh, Jay Leno used to have this um, man in the street piece on his- uh, Late late night talk shows, and he would ask right. people, you know, who the vice president is, uh, or uh, who the secretary of state is, or yeah. uh, the capital city of a given state, or mm -hmm. you know, any number of things that should be obvious to an engaged person in the electorate. And and um, more often than not, they would not have a clue. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just um, you know that they know the issues. It's not just that they know the candidates. It's that they do they know the world around them. Are they sophisticated enough to put the information that is beamed at them together so that they can make choices about the world in which we live and want to live? And the answer, I think, is no. Um, we had a show just now about social media just a minute ago, and, and um, we were talking about John Favreau, who is a surveyor, mm -hmm. used to be a speechwriter for Barack Obama. Right. Um, and he's uh, somebody pointed out that he's also an actor. Um, but but what, what is interesting is he conducted a survey of a bunch of young people at a table, and, he, and uh, which is his job as a surveyor, and and um, and there was a camera on them, and he asked them, you know, do, 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 are you going to vote? And to get this lukewarm answer, it wasn't clear that any of them were actually going to vote. Um, do you you know you know the candidates? Not clear. Uh, do you know the issues? Not clear. Uh, and they were you know just so wasted. Um, on being informed, being ready, if you will, uh, right. to go to your question about what does ready mean. Uh, ready means walking into the, um, you know, the, the polling place or dealing with mail-in ballots and having some clue about what you're going to do. And one of the points made was that they, they, they were a generation that did not have a clue, and they walked into the, um, you know, the ballot, the polling place or handled the, the mail-in ballot, if at all, um, without knowing what they were going to do. And they would, you know, sort of, uh, you know, take a whiz at it. And let's see, this is a familiar name. And, um, you know, I mean, that sounds right. And um, bottom line is um, they're not ready. And, um, and furthermore, actually, Michael, they're not going to be ready because here we are uh, in uh, September. Some people have already voted or about to vote. And uh, voting at any event is very close. And how are you going to prepare, to use that right. term, uh, an electorate of 330 million people in a matter of uh, 60 days? And the answer right. is 
no, sorry, you can't. Right. Well, I'd like to dig a little deeper with you on this issue um, and talk about why things are this way. What are the reasons for this lack of engagement, for this lack of knowledge, for this uh, what you call being wasted? I would use a different term. I would just say lack of knowledge and lack of interest. Apathy is usually the term that's applied to this phenomenon uh, in, in uh, sociological discourse. Why do you think, why have, how have we gotten here and why? Technology. Um, mm -hmm. Television has changed, radio has changed, newspapers have declined. Mm -hmm. Reading, reading, I, that's not a technological thing, but reading has declined. Mm -hmm. um, and social media has emerged as mm -hmm. a sole source for many tens of millions of, of people, especially including young people. Right. Um, and if you look at that, if you stand there in the street corner looking at it for six hours a day, you have your phone out wherever you go, mm -hmm. um, then um, you are not getting real critical thinking. I'm sorry, Michael. As much as you want to see critical thinking in every corner of our world, sorry, it's not there and people aren't getting it and they are latched on to their social media. You, know, you watch movies on Netflix, Netflix and, and uh, Prime and uh, you, you watch these movies that are made today, 2022. Yes. Or for that matter, that made, you know, during the active, the more active uh, era of COVID. Mm -hmm. And you see, the movie is often, and I mean often, based strictly around the phone. There is a phone in every scene. There's a phone in every, you know, communication. There's a phone in every passage of information. So interesting how phones have taken over our lives and our interaction with each other. And uh, likewise, they have taken over in terms of communicating mass information to us. Yes. It's very scary how little information we are getting out of the phones. Okay. Uh, well, I, I want to continue to dig a little deeper on this. So what I'm hearing you say, uh, one of the main points you're making is this is a tech a problem of technology and the advances in technology. But what I want to ask you is, is it only a problem of technology? Or is there something else going on with us as human beings that has lent ourselves to be so absorbed in all these different kinds of technology. Have we lost something of ourselves in this process? I don't know how it was a hundred years ago. I, I would like to think a hundred years ago, people were more engaged, that mm -hmm. they understood at some level of their cortical brain um, mm -hmm. that we were involved, we were all involved in a, in a, um, a, uh, a, a, a community, uh, a, uh, a, a an agreement that um, the government we have is a workable government, um, a, a social social safety net, not not in the term of uh, this disadvantaged people, but a, a social mesh um, that we are together in this, and that we uh, have chosen this form of government, and we need to abide by it and work on it, and uh, we need to. You know, treat it with some respect and care and attention. Right. Um, right. I, I don't think we have that anymore. I think we've abdicated, um, you know, abdicated the notion of working together in, in a society. Um, I think there's so much negativity happening. I think there's so many people who have dropped out. And um, there's a lot of things in American history that, you know, that take us down the path to where we are now. But yeah. where we are now is not. Uh, where people agree that they are part of, you know, the government is us and we are the government and we live in, you know, the greatest country on earth. None of that. We don't have that anymore. We don't have the rule of law. We don't have a belief in, right. in, in, in democracy or in Congress, or certainly we don't have a belief in the Supreme Court and we don't have right. the executive branch or the agencies. Well, <laughs> so uh, to go back to your example of, um, the uh, survey or the focus group. And by the way, I did watch that. It was very interesting. To what extent do you think the reasons that you're giving now may be at least part of the reason why these young people are so disengaged? Oh, I think it's a failure in, 
the, the largest element of that is it's the failure of education. Okay. No teacher, no no teacher ever inspired them. No teacher used the term critical thinking. And if yes. they used the term critical thinking, they did not explain critical thinking. And Absolutely. even if they explained critical thinking, they did not give them examples. They didn't take them down the syllogistic path of how you mm -hmm. get from you know facts to uh, uh, conclusions and so forth. And so the, they really don't understand what you're talking about on this show. I hope right. this show reaches 330 million people, although it's not <laughs> likely to. Uh, yeah. I think we have we have we lost our opportunity in the educational system of this country, um, maybe post war, post Vietnam. Uh, where you sit in a class and you learn and you're tested and um, you know you're not looking at your phone, uh, you're not out out in the in the, in the playground smoking weed. Uh, you're you know you're actually trying to learn stuff and make the world better. Now some people you know get to be you know professionals. They um, they get to be leaders in industry and all that. They're really mm -hmm. smart. They go to the best schools, get the best grades. I'm not saying there's nobody. I'm just saying we need an electorate. The way it works is people vote, what they could vote in, in tens of millions. And we have in this country half the electorate, as indicated by the elect presidential election of 2016 and 2020, half the country you know, is, is ignorant and unable to engage and understand the difference between fact and fiction. Okay, well, I'd like to take us back to this issue of education, because as you know, I am an educator. I've been in the classroom. I've taught uh, undergraduates and some upper division undergraduates, but I've also been very involved with, you know, radio work and this show and uh, active in other areas. And um, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, we do not have an education system in this country that teaches young people or any people to think critically. And what that means is not just to regurgitate facts from a lecture hall that has four or 500 people in it. That has its place. But to be able to think through issues by questioning assumptions, by asking, well, what do you mean by this? <clears throat> and to you know, question the information that's coming at us all the time. Uh, I don't believe we, overall, we have an education system in this country that prepares young people to be engaged citizens. So I agree with you, that is part of the problem. Now, um, it's one thing to acknowledge that as being part of the problem, excuse me. <clears throat> it's another thing to talk about what do we do about it? And that's a much longer conversation. Um, but, um, you know, I believe in what's called critical pedagogy, pedagogy, just meaning teaching. Okay. Critical pedagogy of the exact kind that I was just trying to explain where, uh, students and anybody le learns how to think about things and not just receive information because there are a lot of assumptions that are packed into the information that's presented to us. Unless we know how to recognize those assumptions and start to ask questions about them, we can't be informed citizens in a democracy. We can't really be an informed voter. What do you, what do you think? Sorry, I, you know, I'm thinking of law school. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of law school. Uh, where yes. The teacher will make you stand and state the case. And Absolutely. Uh, if you haven't read the case, it's going to be visible to him and everybody in the room immediately. Right. Um, he is going to ask you to ask him questions. Right. He's going to ask you to argue with him. Um, now, you know, everybody says that lawyers are, you know, lawyers can take both sides of the case. You know, they train yeah. to do that and they are trained to do that. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to do that in, a, you know, in our legal system. Yeah. Right. But but, but the, the, the experience of learning how to do that is, is valuable in the sense that uh -huh. you have to ask questions and you have to be able to answer questions. You have to be able to take a position or not. I don't think the um, that method, um, uh, uh, you know, takes place in in other circumstances. Um, uh, what I mean is in you know in grade school and high school and yes. generally in college, it's three hundred kids in a 
in a, in a big room and they're just writing mm -hmm. notes as feverishly as they can so they can regurgitate in the final. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> that's not education. You know, years ago, we criticized China uh, for just uh, <clears throat> teaching facts, teach, teaching uh, and propaganda um, to, to students and, and asking them to regurgitate. And if they did well, uh, in the regurgitation, um, you know, they they got good grades and all that. Right. And we right. said, ah, the, the Chinese don't know how to really educate. We here in the United States, um, we know how to educate. We know how to make them think creatively and so forth. And, and that's right. why we're the leader in the world. Well, uh, uh, you know, fast forward, and um, they're the ones who are doing the thinking now. Um, and we're the ones who are doing the regurgitation now. And right. query, can we maintain our, uh, you know, our, our aspiration of, of doing creative thinking when we are not teaching kids to do the creative thinking? Right. The problem, of course, in China is that they, they don't do the creative uh, thinking in, in, in a political sense, in an ideological sense. You have to follow the, uh, the propaganda or bad things will happen to you. Uh, in the U.S., um, we could do that, but we don't do that. And we have so much misinformation. That kids well, are so confused about it, they don't know which end is up. But it's right. not just kids, Michael. No. It's not just kids, you know. Yes. We know we are we're being battered, as you say, we're being battered with bad information all day long, and we're not asked to test it. We're like sponges sitting there. And right. we learn we learn what the what the channels are telling us. Uh, and then we get uh, a lot of uh, a lot of ads, and and I think some people learn the ads better than they do the content. <laughs> Um, right. I can even tell you what Sky Rizzi is and Rinvac, uh, right, right. And drugs, whatnot. Bottom line is that um, that uh, it, you know it's it's an elegant and important and critical human function to do critical thinking, and uh, we 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 aren't doing it. We're not teaching them, and uh, the whole yeah. education system has forgotten about it, uh, and right. uh, has not kept well, up with the world. The world has changed. Yes. Yes. Even in Europe, they know and they care about these things, but we don't. Well, I think one of the issues here is what priority do, do our government officials and our elected representatives give to funding the educational system? As I'm sure you know, ever since the late 1970s, public education has been consistently defunded. When I went to college, uh, I went to the University of California, Berkeley. I had done some junior college before that, which was free. When I got to the University of California at Berkeley in 1972, you know how much tuition I paid per semester? $212. Look at what tuitions are today. And this is largely because our governmental priorities have shifted away from providing for a good education. And so to me, it's no surprise that we have people who are disengaged, who don't know how to think critically, and are uh, uh, massively uh, misinformed or disinformed. The other thing I would point to, you know, as we start to wrap up here, it's, you know, what's the role of the media in all this? And when I say the media, I'm not just talking about social media. Of course, you've already pointed to the, uh, the prevalence of that and its overwhelming nature and how people have accustomed themselves to technology. But um, what about the role of, of the mass media? And I'm talking about MSNBC, CNN, you know, all of these uh, major media platforms. What role are they playing in, in providing the kind of information and the forum for critical thinking that is essential to a democracy? I don't see it happening. And then the question is why? Hmm. Well, some media try to be straight. Uh, I, I think MSNBC tries to be straight. They don't always succeed, but they try. Um, I think uh, Fox News tries, tries to be crooked and uh, they are corrupted. They're corrupted by their own bottom line. They're corrupted by their leadership and they're never going to give it to you straight. It's all right. misinformation. And um, you know, the problem is a lot of people watch it because from a social psychology point of view, they need to watch it. They want to watch it. 
it, it is more entertainment. Edutainment is what it is. Um, and, you know, and, and various other media on the, the spectrum, Newsmax, another example, Sinclair Radio, terrible. Um, on the other hand, if you look at BBC, which to me is the standard, the old fashioned classical news story, um, they're pretty straight. Uh, and I think we have to get back to that. The problem is that um, it's, it's a capitalist world. They have to make money. They have, yeah. to, they have to sell, um, you know, uh, Sky Rizzi and Rinvoke uh, mm-hmm. and all those and Tide and Downey and whatnot. Right. They have to sell that and load you up for every five minutes of, quote, news, end quote. There's five minutes of that. And it, it really throws the message off, you know. You when know. we come back, when we come back. Yeah. And, and, you know, here we are talking about um, you know, butchering in Bucha. Um, and let's take a minute and talk about Tide and Downey. What? What kind of message is that? You know, this is all social psychology. And the fact is that when people are finished with formal school, however valuable or, or not valuable that was, um, they're, most of their education is through mass media. And if the mass media doesn't do its job, and a lot of these mass media are in, intentionally not doing their job, um, we have a, a population and electorate that is not prepared to vote, right. not prepared to participate in in uh, collaborative government in in the um, you know the the the, the, the social safety right. net that binds us together. To me, this is a problem that goes to the core of our democracy, and we could spend another whole show talking about what what is democracy and what do we mean by it. There's a contradiction here right. between. It'll be a nostalgic show after November. Well, uh, I don't think any, unfortunately, I don't think any of the, these issues are too important to become nostalgic only. But um, my point is that there's a basic contradiction between living in a truly democratic society and political culture and living in a capitalist system. Because the fundamental principles of those two can be seen as being at odds. Capitalism is about profit, mostly corporate profit, and democracy should about be about, I believe, citizen participation uh, in the decisions that affect us. And as long as we do not have a media that's responsive to the public interest, remember, the airwaves belong to us, the people, but they're rented out to corporations and other private entities to use as they will, uh, the question would be, are they using those airwaves in the public interest? That would be another whole show. But you know, in, in closing, I, I just want to kind of come back to the original question, you know, and let's just briefly say, why are all these problems important? You know, and, and what can citizens of Hawaii and the US, how can we, they make a difference on these issues? Because these seems to be critical to moving forward in our country and in the world today. What do you think? When uh, Ben Franklin walked out of uh, Independence Hall, Liberty Hall in uh, Philadelphia, a woman Mm -hmm. stopped him and she said, Dr. Franklin, Dr. Franklin, what kind, it was secret, you know, what was going on in their their deliberations. Uh, Dr. Franklin, Dr. Franklin, what what kind of a government can we have? You've heard this. And he answered her, he said, Republic, madam, if you can keep it. And um, even at the outset, they knew, all of them in Liberty Hall, um, they knew that uh, one of the issues was whether we, the the descendants of Ben Franklin, can keep um, the brilliant structure that they thought they set up way back then. And and we're at a crunch point. Can we keep it? Uh, We're not doing much of a job about that. Uh, I think well, I think um, the the social psychology that applies to the country today allows for a a cult and a cult figure like Donald Trump to pull the rug out from under whatever is left of the uh, of the safety net of the social compact uh, right. that 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 has that has held the country together all this time, and um, I I think we're really at a critical point. So yes, it is important. November is important. And if we have people running the government who are incompetent and lie, um, we are going to pay a terrible price, not only conceptually as, as the nation, as a republic, uh, in Ben Franklin's term, um, but also individually. Every single one of us 
um, to lose rights, human rights, legal rights, um, to lose the ability to function together under the you know three-part, three-branch government that those guys set up um, is going to have a huge effect on every single one of us, including the media, including you and me, Michael. So I, uh, I, I am greatly concerned about this question of whether the electorate is ready. I don't think it is, and I don't think it's going to get ready in the next 60 days. And God knows what will follow. Well, Jay, I agree with uh, pretty much everything you're saying. I just want to emphasize that education is key here. I'm talking about education on all levels of our public life. Well, let me add that to educate somebody, you have to work at it. You have Absolutely. to get them in a classroom. You have to get his attention. You have to relate to him, not only as a member of this 300 class group, you know, mm -hmm. you have to relate to him as an individual person. You have to, you have to build an architecture in his mind or her mind. Uh, and mm -hmm. that takes a whole lifetime of education. We can't do that in 60 days. No, uh, we have to. Probably can't do that in four years or eight years. It takes a, a, a generation, at least, to yes. do that. Uh, Hitler knew how to do that. Um, you know, he, he created a whole new school system in the early 30s, where he trained every, every kid in Germany how to follow him and his propaganda. Well, uh, and it took quite a while, and he knew about that. Well, obviously, we do not want to follow his example. And um, I think we have to start from here and now. We, as... Uh, informed American citizens have to make sure that education, once again, is one of the top priorities in our, in our government spending. And um, until we can elect people who are willing to push for that, it's up to us, the people ourselves, to organize ourselves to make the politicians do it. So on that note, I want to thank you so much, Jay, for joining me. It's been an Wonderful discussion, and I hope you come back sometime. This has been Thinking Things Through, critical thinking for critical times on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.